Today we're going to talk about the 18-year-old Texas school shooter who went on a killing spree at an elementary school in Ovalde, Texas, which is about an hour and a half west of San Antonio. It has a population of just over 16,000 people. His name is Salvador Ramos and this happened on Tuesday, May 24th. 19 children and two adults died and it was said that 17 others were injured. We're going to go through 10 important points about Salvador and I'm going to show you that there were some red flags. So now, let's get into it. Now a little bit about the elementary school, it's called Rob Elementary School. As of the 2020-2021 year, it's said to have had about 535 students in it, and it taught grades 2, 3, and 4. Now let's talk about the shooter. Salvador lived in the area of Uvalde. It's only a four minute drive away from Rob Elementary. He was living with his grandparents. And he moved there just a couple of months before that from his mom's house, where they got into some sort of argument or altercation about disconnected Wi-Fi. One of the neighbors said that there were many disturbances at the home, and the day that he arrived at his grandparents' house, that there were eight police officers that arrived on scene. No details as to why. From my research, it said the dad wasn't really in the picture, and his mom lived with another guy who has been in the picture for the last year or so, and they lived together. Now, Salvador stopped attending school. He was in his last year, and he did not graduate. He was employed. The manager of the Wendy's confirmed that he did work there. Let's go to number two. He bought himself a deadly birthday gift. His birthday was May 16th. He was born in 2004. He celebrated with his grandmother by going to Applebee's. He legally purchased two rifles, one on May 17th, a day after his birthday, and one on May 20th. On the 18th, he bought 375 rounds of ammo. Salvador sent a photo to a former classmate. He sent him a photo of his AR-15 gun, a backpack with ammo, and also several gun magazines. And his grandpa said that he didn't know he had guns. He said, if I had known, I would have reported him. They don't let you buy beer until 21, but they let you buy guns at 18. I despise weapons. Number three, he shot grandma in the face. Some sort of argument happened about the phone. Grandpa says there wasn't an argument. He says that the grandmother wanted him to get his own phone. Another report says that they were arguing about a graduation. So Salvador grabs his gun and shoots his grandma in the face. A neighbor heard shots from the house and said that Salvador zipped out of the house, went across the yard, climbed into his vehicle, and then tried to get it out of park. He seemed panicked and he spun out basically spitting gravel everywhere. Neighbor says that grandma comes out covered in blood and says to the neighbor, this is what he did, he shot me. Can you imagine getting shot by your own grandson? Now, latest report said that grandma just got out of surgery and there will be several surgeries in the future and that she won't be out anytime soon of the hospital. Number four, he crashed his truck into the ditch. So he just shoots grandma, he climbs into his truck and then he goes and drives towards the school. Now the school is about a four minute drive. So he smashes through a concrete barricade and then crashed into that ditch. Now he got out of the truck with his rifle and it said that he was wearing a tactical vest, but he didn't have anything actually inside to protect him. So basically he was playing dress up. In pictures, it showed that his backpack was beside the truck and was left with quite a bit of ammo. Number five, he entered the classroom and locked himself in a grade four classroom. So he enters the school shooting anyone and anything that gets in his way. And he locks himself into this fourth grade classroom. There were five fourth graders that took cover under a table that had a tablecloth over top of it. One of the students, that was hiding said that Salvador came into the classroom, crouched a little bit and said, it's time to die. Reports say they found seven 30 round magazines inside the school. Number six, he killed 19 students and two teachers and several others were wounded. This happened two days before summer. Many kids received awards that day. They were watching Moana. And it's so fun, right? At the end of the school year, you're anticipating summer holidays. You get to do fun things like watch a movie in school. One of the kids from the school was talking about the teachers and he said they were standing in the door in case if the shooter breaks in, the teacher will block the bullets with their bodies so we can run and save our lives. 
And in recent reports, one of the teacher's husbands died from a heart attack. Well, just after he was visiting his wife's memorial, they leave behind several children. So now both parents are gone. Number seven, he had a list to check off and he shared his mission. Salvador was on a mission. Number one, buy guns and ammo, check. Number two, shoot grandma, check. Number three, shoot up an elementary school, check. But first, let's talk about number one, the guns. Three days before the shooting, he posts a photo on Instagram of these two AR-15 style rifles. A friend saw it and said, quote, I was like, bro, why do you have this? And he was like, don't worry about it. He proceeded to text me, I look very different now, you wouldn't recognize me. Also, Salvador was talking online to a 15-year-old girl from Germany, and he told her that he received a package of ammo that would expand on impact. She asked him, what are you planning to do with it? And he told her it was gonna be a surprise, and he couldn't tell his secret until his grandpa left the house. On a video call, he had been talking to her for a few weeks, every day pretty much, he showed her a black bag with ammo and one of the guns, and she has actually screenshots of it. The day of the shooting, he calls her up at 11.01, and he says he loved her. Then he texts the girl that he's waiting for his grandma to get off the phone because she was on the phone with AT&T. Then 15 minutes later, he texts her that he shot his grandma. He said, I just shot my grandma in the head. I'm a shoot up an elementary school right now. He also shares this little mission on Facebook in a private message. The first post was, I'm going to shoot my grandmother. Number two, I shot my grandmother. And number three, I'm gonna shoot an elementary school. Now, no, we're gonna talk about this in a minute, but basically he wants to feel important, right? By spreading this all over the place. He feels power also over grandma but he has to wait till grandpa leaves. Number eight, he's described as a loner. The manager of the Wendy's said, he kept to himself mostly. He didn't really socialize with the other employees. He just worked, got paid, and came in to get his check. His mom's boyfriend says, he was kind of a weird one. I never got along with him. I never socialized with him. He doesn't talk to nobody. When you try to talk to him, he'd just sit there and walk away. Number nine, there were several red flags. A coworker described him as having an aggressive streak. His coworker said he would be very rude toward the girls sometimes and one of the cooks threatening them by asking, do you know who I am? And he would also send inappropriate texts to the ladies. Also, there were reports that at the park, there'd be videos of him trying to fight people with boxing gloves. He'd take them around with them. Another girl from high school said he had anger issues. People are saying he was bullied, but I didn't see that. He was more like the bully. The bullying, was said to be that he had a speech impediment that also included a stutter and a lisp. Reports also say that he cut himself. He had scratches all over his face, but he, at first he said it was a cat, and then he admitted that he actually did that to himself with a knife just for fun. A friend also reported that he used to egg random vehicles, and also he would take his BB gun and shoot at random strangers from a vehicle. Also reports are coming in that he would say nasty things to his mom and also would post videos about it and he'd be screaming and talking to his mom aggressively. And two former close friends said that his behavior was deteriorating. Salvador's mom said, I had an uneasy feeling sometimes, like, what are you up to? He can be aggressive if he really got mad. We all have a rage that some people have it more than others. This kid was a ticking time bomb, and if the bomb wasn't defused, what's gonna happen, right? It's gonna blow. Number 10, police shoot him dead. Now, there were reports coming out that it was at least 40 minutes that he was in the school. Now it's an hour, and then I'm also reading up to 90 minutes in the school. So there's some controversy, and hopefully I can get it sorted out and then bring it to you in a timeline. If you'd like me to do that timeline, put a heck yeah timeline in the comments below. So after he killed all these people, the police shoot him dead. This 18-year-old took 21 lives and left so many people heartbroken and shattered and parents had to sit for hours and hours wondering and waiting to know if their child was okay, if they were alive, or if they were dead. It was said that they took DNA samples and they had to wait excruciatingly for the results. And then they find out that their whole heart has been broken and shattered into a million pieces. It's so very, very traumatic for everyone involved, especially for those kids who were in that school that day, and the teachers. 
and experience the horror of their little friends being killed one by one. How do you feel safe going to a place that you're supposed to feel safe in? Now funerals will be taking place. Funerals that should have been 80 years from now in the year 2100, not 2022. The shooter had no problem killing innocent people and little children. Just point and shoot. Little children wanting their mommies and daddies. And in two days, the school would have been out for summer. Salvador Ramos timed it. It's clear from purchasing the guns, the ammo, the vest. If it wasn't there, it would have been somewhere else. And the warning signs were there. It was all ramping up. Like I said, ticking time bomb. Bombs have to go off if they're not defused, right? And think about the first responders having to see that massacre and those who had to pick those dead children up. The coroner even mentioned having to write 21 death certificates and he's dreading it. And why? Because an 18 year old needed to feel important. He needed to prove he's in power and that he's powerful. That's why he waited for grandpa to leave. So he could have power over grandma and feel he's in power by attempting to kill her. Was hoping probably to kill her. He chose the elementary school, not the high school, because high school students can overtake him and little children can't. That's his way of feeling powerful. And it's the only place in his mind to have power. Put fear into those children. Big, powerful guy. He chose to post to social media and these private texts to show people who he is. Don't you know who I think I am? The worst thing you could do is bury your child. You're not supposed to outlive them. I'm going to leave a link below so you can see each and every victim. There's also a link to donate and some families who have created GoFundMe accounts. I'll leave that in the description box below this video. Here's what you can watch next.